We are. Our little friend is going on a little bit of a walkabout and one of the adults moved around to this other shady spot. We just changed our position just slightly from the den so you can see how far away we are from the den. We don't want to get too close. The little one is just moving amongst the grass somewhere in there and then it ventures too far and then it gets a fright and comes racing back and startles the poor adults who are really just trying to get a bit of sleep. Now, I actually, I have no idea of the sex of this cub because just a moment ago, I mean, I thought I remember James saying, I think it was male and female, or both females, I can't actually remember. I didn't get to spend much time with Ribbon's cubs, very sadly. But when we were having a look at the, the hyena a moment ago, and it, it well, it's had its pseudo-vagina, if you will. <laughs> Like I said, I'm so sorry. There's just they have to be blatant about these things. Now I know with the males, normally the, the tip of their penis is slightly wider, whereas this little one didn't really show those signs at all. So I wonder if it isn't a little girl. Like I said, I haven't spent much time with these hyenas at all, so you have to bear with me. I'm still getting to know them. So perhaps it is a little girl. But you can help me. You can hashtag Safari Live if you remember. Hyenas are not the easiest things to identify, especially when you're trying to tell between male and female, and their reproductive organ organs are almost exactly the same. It does take a little bit of practice, but it'll get better. Going back over. So I'm trying to figure out also which one is mom. It would obviously help if it would suckle, then we'd be definitely able to tell this must be mom. Nikki, you're wondering how prone are hyena cubs to wandering off? I haven't seen them go too far, but we just experienced it now. This little one probably went about maybe 80 meters or so away from the den site, which is quite a distance away. The adults couldn't see it anymore. And then it made a, like a little distress call and it came racing back and the adults jumped up very quickly to see what the problem was, what was causing this little one to get a fright. Um, so they can, like any young animal, they are curious, they've been told that they need to stay around this spot, but do they ever listen like children? No, they do what they want, and the further and further that they do wander away, they're going to find themselves uh, in trouble. Now imagine as these adults are leaving the den, and that youngster is getting to the age now where it's going to want to start following the adults, it might do that, it might run after the adults even though it's been told to stay put it needs to try and find its way back and that's why it is so important that it learns its clan scent because if that does happen it can find its way back to the den it's just like you when you get you go out to the shops and you actually leave the gate open and your dog tries to follow you it's a similar thing they sort of get to a point and they go ah oh, i've gone too far oh, where my owners are let me try and get back home and it's almost similar to that so we see it with leopard cubs we see it with lion cubs they all start to wonder. We definitely saw it with Hosanna and Shongile. Um, they used to disappear and go about on their own adventures quite often. So it's, it's not uncommon with, with young animals, really, unless you are something like an antelope. And I've seen that they seem to be very well trained because whenever an Anyala goes off or a bushbuck goes off and their mom says, stay put in the thicket because they often hide their little ones out of sight, and I've seen the same thing with water buck. They don't move. They just stay there. Here it comes. The little one's coming back out. It's actually going to another entrance. So this is the entrance that's covered up by a shrub. Now it's just sitting in the shade. Just underneath all of those leaves, you can see it's quite difficult. So that entrance is quite protected, but it's also a, a, quite a big hole going in there. So there's three different entrances that I think that they are, are using. The one with the fallen tree seems to be the most used one. That's where we keep seeing the cubs coming in and out. That one might just be a good resting spot. And then, of course, there's that massive entrance right at the front of the hole, the first one that you see. But I don't think that they're going to get up to too much more. I think this little cub has obviously had a good suckle, had a good feed, belly's full, and is going to have a siesta and join in with the rest of the hyenas. I would just love to see that other younger cub but we'll have to be patient. We were very lucky to see it the first day that we found the active den. But that's wonderful. I think we're actually going to head off now. I think we've sat with these hyenas for a bit of time now. You know, they're very relaxed with us. They're not particularly bothered, but we can come back in the afternoon and I don't want to harass them too much. They deserve a bit of peace and quiet too. They don't need to hear my voice all the time. So thank